Hello and welcome back to Cinematic Universe, everyone. My name is Ernesto Martinez. Joining me, as always, is Damon the Hawk. Hawkman, how are you, man? I'm good. It happened. It sure did. It happened. <laughs> Even <laughs> past the first 16 minutes, I was already giddying and glee and cussing and every single language and geek fandom history. This was an amazing episode. Yeah, too much fun. Way too much fun. Too much for its own good, but who gives a shit? <laughs> oh my god, the episode is titled World's Finest. Also based on the comic book of the same name, which features Superman proper and The Flash as well, Barry Allen. First time I saw an adaptation of this was back in the Superman animated series, where Superman and Flash raced around the earth for charity until they encountered Weather Wizard and they had to deal with that until they got back to doing their race. We never found out who the fastest man alive was, but it sure was a fun little adventure all the same. So here we get a second shot in a crossover that ever since... You know, since day one, not just the fact that Berlanti's name is listed in the credits as producer, but since day one, we've all toyed about the idea of a multiverse in the TV universe. And then we all talked about, well, maybe it won't happen because of legal stuff, because of the networks, networks not wanting to share, and all that stuff. So it felt like a pipe dream, pretty much. Until one day, they announced it, that it was happening. And man, the results... That was a good day. It was a good day. And the results after watching tonight's episode, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. With all the cheese that this episode was oozing, still fantastic. Yep. What do you have to say about it? <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. On all points, uh, especially the cheese factor and the fact that I was able to enjoy it as much as I did despite 17 different kinds of cheese, man. I was just, it, it didn't matter. It was, it was, it was bold and beautiful and brilliant and fun and I, I had a blast. I had a blast. I loved, uh, I loved their chemistry together. I loved that, uh, Wynn and Barry hit it off. I love that James was jealous, even though I've really just kind of gotten over that whole will they or won't they thing that's been going on. It, everything about this was fun. I like that Cat is immediately, you know, trying to come up with a name. I love that Barry didn't care for the name she came up with. Uh, and, and the villains, the villains were great. So much fun. Just perfect. Absolutely perfect. It felt like a. It felt very classic. It did. When you consider all the cheese factor, the fact that Siobhan Smee went all the way, well, went all out of her way to put cosplay makeup just so that she can embrace the fact that she is transforming into the Silver Banshee. She looked good too, man. She looked really good. I like to know what she used to elevate her cheekbones to look like that. <laughs> Because, you know, she looked like she she kind of, those cheekbones were kind of going like the Walking Dead, almost. But, you know, as far as cosplays go, that one was great, eh? Wonderful. And, you know, Livewire. Because the entire time I'm just thinking, well, it can't be just Silver Banshee, because this isn't going to be any fun at all. So what other supervillain is going to, you know, team up with Siobhan Smee? And then, when you see Livewire, I'm just like... Oh, now that's just perfect. Yeah, it is. And the chemistry between them was so good. Oh, yeah, so the bad girl good. attitude between those two was electrifying. Pun intended. Ah, yeah. uh, listen to you. But not compared to the chemistry between Barry Allen and Kara. Yeah. I mean, granted, was... these two come from the same uh, show, Glee. Yep. So it was expected, but holy shit. It just worked on so many levels immediately. The immediately. smile that I had on my face was 
if you would have seen it, you'd have been like, uh, hello, man, you okay? You look like you just died and went to heaven. I Yes, I did. <laughs> this is the second crossover, in a, in a sense, that I have seen in the last few days where all my superheroes are in the same space. Yeah. Although, my one, my one negative on this, uh, besides the cheese, which I'm totally okay with because I actually like cheese, um, I wanted to see Martian Manhunter and The Flash together. And I didn't get that. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this will do well enough and be well enough received, and I can't imagine that it wouldn't be, that we will at some point down the road get to see Barry Allen and John Jones. Oh, no, of course. I fully expect them to return to this well in as much as when they do it on Arrow and their own show, which I'll bring it up, one of the Easter eggs, and this is what I love about the idea of a multiverse. You can play with a multiverse to the point where you can have Bruce Wayne walking down a newsstand. You can see an Iron Man comic book just sitting around. Here, you have Cat Grant saying, man, the four of you look like the least diverse CW cast show ever. <laughs> I lost it, because I expected that in a, in a show that's dealing with multiversities. I mean, yeah, that'll, that would blow Barry Allen's mind if you told him, oh yeah, you're a CW character, and you're like, what? <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, they continue to work on the Jimmy Olsen and Kara relationship. Which, again, thank God Barry's around because Barry is always a voice of reason. Even though sometimes he's the one who needs a pep talk. And then you have Win Scott, who I also enjoyed in this episode because after all Siobhan was doing, I, it felt to me like, wow, he really is her anchor. And the tragedy is going to, you know, I don't know how it's going to hit when moving forward the, now that she's fully embraced her heritage. But I would not be surprised if something happens along the way where Wynn loses his mind as well and he teams up with Silver Banshee and his Toy Man Jr. and Silver Banshee versus Supergirl. I mean, it'll take some amazing uh, trauma to get Wynn that far into the spectrum, but I'm just saying, the idea is out there. Yeah, yeah, it's a possibility. I know there's so much more to talk about, but usually when an episode is this good, it just... You know, it doesn't feel like you want to talk that much because you know it was already amazing. And if you guys are listening to this review, that you know exactly what it was we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, mean, I, I, really, I really feel like I need to go back and, and watch it one more time just so I can, you know, get it all clear in my head. Yeah, and I like the reason that they gave for how Flash entered her universe, which... Really, when you look at the chronology of it, you can pretty much place it where it is right now in the series where Barry Allen is trying to get faster in order to take on Zoom. So it stands to reason that he just ran too fast. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm interested to see if it will be referenced on tomorrow night's episode of The Flash. Will we... Will we get a nod to it? Will, will he actually talk about being on another Earth? I'm, I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I want to see what happens here. Yeah. Because I honestly thought last week we might get a lead-in of sorts. Um, and when that didn't happen, I was, I was just, I was really curious. Well, and again, this felt like it was an experiment, so I guess they wanted, they didn't want to plant the seeds too far ahead without, you know, having a game plan if it doesn't, you know, work out as fluidly as they hoped. So for future episodes, they'll probably, you know, find a way. And there's always a way. It's comic books. There's always a reason and there's always a need to bring heroes together, even though they go to different networks. True. Um, something we probably should talk about, um, when NBC uh, announced their uh, their shows that they were renewing, uh, I guess it was last week, uh, Supergirl was not among them. And a lot of people have taken this as a possibility that it won't be renewed uh, for the fall. Um, 
NBC has been very, very clear CBS. about... CBS. Oh, CBS, I'm sorry. Yeah. They've been very clear about the fact that they, they haven't announced the full slate and that there is still a possibility. But I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, so what if... What if they didn't pick it up? What would... I mean... Do you think that after having seen the audience that it attracts on CBS, that CW might uh, step in and pick it up? I mean, I, I know I'm talking way ahead of, of everything here, but it, it's been on my mind. Well, I'm still waiting for Cyborg Superman to be Dean Cain. Number <laughs> one. I'm still waiting for that. Number two, after we spoke about Manhunter... We need to know what where Hank where Hank Shaw actually is, cause no body, no death. Right. So that being said, there is a possibility that maybe CW will pick it up, and we're just you know that's a you know that's pretty much us asking for a miracle. Cause I was I'll be honest, I was under the impression that it was it already got renewed, but then when I actually looked it up, oh, it got a full season order. That's the difference between full season order and being renewed. Right. Well, let's look at the scene where Barry Allen is Googling, I'm assuming he's Googling, he's Googling pretty much every part on the planet, and he says, you guys have a Central City, but you don't have a Star Labs, you don't have a Cisco. So right. that, to me, must mean that there is a, uh, I keep forgetting, it starts with a C, what's the city that Kara's protecting? National City. Yeah, I would assume that there's a national city in the CW version of the Flash and Arrow. And they all probably occupy very close to each other, a la Metropolis and Gotham. So, if at some point during the next few episodes of the Flash or Arrow they reference a national city, then there could be a possibility that if it doesn't work out on CBS... CW shouldn't have an, an issue taking the reins. Because why wouldn't they have a female-led action comic book series in their time slot? On top of having on top of having the 100, my crazy ex-girlfriend, and whatever the hell they have in their slate. Hell, if CW gets it, you can see a... You will, we will probably see a change in storytelling like that. Yeah, I would imagine. But yeah, man, I really can't give a definitive answer. In instead, I'll just give that my fandom answer, my geek, my geek out. Hope this could happen. Answer. Yeah. And it would be great if it happens because Lord knows we've all been we've all found our, ourselves in a situation where oh well, another network will pick it up, and no network ever picks up anything that we want them to pick up. You have a show like Hannibal, and when that didn't work out after season three, we're thinking, well, maybe it can go to Amazon, maybe it can go to Netflix, maybe it can go to, you know, HBO, maybe it can go to Showtime, maybe it can go to FX or FXXX or whatever network that takes any show after 10 o'clock and still has a built-in audience, but that never happened. So, wishful thinking, and until this season is over, I wish nothing for the best for Supergirl because... In the last five episodes, they have been killing it, and this one cemented just how great it's been. Yeah. God damn it, Melissa Benoist, you're so gorgeous. <laughs> they did not pull any punches. Maybe it's because they added more yellow to all the scenes she was in, and the fact that she was wearing a yellow dress at the same time for 100% of the episode, but it was inaudibly apparent that this woman is just beaming per episode, and it's amazing. I, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's pretty much everything that we can say about this episode. It was cheesy, but 
had that classic touch to it that made it that much more enjoyable. The chemistry between Barry Allen and Kara zor a.k.a. Grant Gustin and Melissa Benoist, was electrifying. It was oozing off the screen in the same way that the actresses for Siobhan Smee and Livewire were also on point. Everything in this episode was on point. The building relationship between Jimmy Olsen and, Super, and Supergirl. Finally, let's now take it from there. And the fact that Non is back to wreak havoc... Well, now we know what he's planned this entire time, which is a mind control device of some sorts. I don't know about you, but at some point I expected there to be a Starro in his neck waiting to pop out. That's exactly out. what I was thinking. Exactly what I was thinking. Well, till next week, right? Yeah, absolutely. Although, I didn't have a tease for next week on mine. Are we getting an episode next week or are they taking a week off? Oh, let me check right now. The power of Google. Oh, yeah, they are taking a, a week off, because the next episode is called Myriad, and it's on April 11th. Okay. All right, so next week we're going to be without a Supergirl episode, so two weeks from now, everybody, we'll be back. My, as as always, my name is Ernesto Martinez. You can follow me at MartinezXYZ on Twitter. You can find me at CreatorsCode.com or MoviePilot.com. <laughs> At Martinez XYZ Cinematic Universe. Damon, as always, thank you for joining me. Absolutely. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.